This one does get a little soggy. Guy found this table and chairs today on the way to work. She was in the ditch with the free sign on it. it was rusty and whatnot, but a little bit of elbow grease and some tsst brought this stuff right back around. Now I have a conference table for the meetings that I never have. Anywho, Guy picked up a new to me rig. It's a pretty good going to town unit. I needed something for the winter. It's a 1981 GMC K1500. Never done a video like this, but I thought, you know what? I'm gonna be doing some upgrades on it anyway. So I might as well bring you guys along and maybe you'll have some ideas and suggestions. You can bleep loop those down in the comments and I'll read through them and might pick up a couple of your ideas, but I'll run that rig in here and we'll take a tour of it. Easy. I don't think I could sit in that one anymore. Dang it. Welcome to Nonfictional Storytime. I'm your host, Derek. Same as last time, I guess. Anyway, guy had a 93 S10. Nice, clean unit. But she didn't have the old tilt -o wheel. And Sasquatches, it turns out, don't fit in S10s very good. Plus, she was a two wheel. So it basically just sat in the old pole shed there for a long time. Ended up selling it to a subscriber, really nice folks. He and his son are gonna fix it up, so I was happy to see it go to a good home. And I've been looking for a 4X4 for quite a while now, and a subscriber named Troy reached out and said, he's got a unit for sale right now, and it's not exactly what I wanted. Lifted trucks are not good for commuting. I mean, this thing's like going through a stubble field in a radio flyer wagon. It just hurts the kidneys. But he's got a lot of nice parts on this thing, and he gave me a super, super fair price. Thank you. So, I snagged on it. But it still needs a lot of work to be a commuter later. Right now, she's only getting nine miles to the gallon, and it's a handful driving this thing 100 miles a day. So, if you guys like the overview today, maybe we'll throw it on the channel and do a couple videos on it. I'm gonna be doing a bunch of stuff to it anyway, so. I don't know. You just put it down there if you want more, whatever. Just, we're, let's do a tour. There's quite the story on this truck, and it also kind of just drew me into it. You'll see all these weird dents all over the truck. And actually, it still makes me nervous. There's a lot of shine on this thing. And the only rust on the truck I've found so far is literally right there. I already put the treatment on her but over here it's really bad and this actually came out of a scrap yard she was stacked up and you could see where the bumper of the fork truck hit or the front end to lift this thing up and I guess it was up on the stack ready to get crushed or parted or something and it actually tore the leaf spring out of it too where the forks hit he already fixed that obviously but I mean otherwise this thing is fairly straight and there's some Got crumpled up here as well. But all in all, it's a pretty solid truck. So let's jump right into the lift kit on this thing. I mean, she's dialed in. It looks amazing, but 
I'm commuting in this all winter, 100 miles a day, and this is exactly what you do not want. And that's coming from someone that's had, this is probably my seventh or eighth lifted truck, so you're just gonna have to trust me. And then from a reliability standpoint, running these little 10 bolts, something's gonna happen. I've got a Turbo 350 with unknown miles in it. And then these brakes, they work good, but I mean, I'm thigh sizing this thing to shut her down. They're just burning to bring her to a whoa. So it's just a lot of wear and tear. Plus the fuel mileage, I'm only getting nine. It'd be nice to get 9.3 somehow. So here's what I'm thinking, and you guys let me know down there in the comment box. I think I might take these mud trains and go to more of an all-terrain tire. Maybe like a 33, 12, 5, 15. And that'll be a little bit easier on all the equipment. Bring the truck down just a little bit. And then I can also get rid of this tire noise. I mean, this thing's like sitting on the wing of a 727 at 6.30 in the morning. And it's just like, you just, I want out, basically. I, I am trying to climb out of the back window. It's so loud. So it'd be nice to tone that down just a little bit. When I'm looking at the gaps here, all the way around the wheel, I'm thinking this is a four inch. We got a spring lift up front and it's halfway decent. They actually did a raised Pitman arm on it as well for the old steering geometry. And then we've just got a block rear, which is the cheap way. You get a lot of axle wrap and well, that one block looks like it's about to pop out of there. That's fine. So after I get the 33s on it, I'll kind of reassess what we got going on. And I might even bring her down to a two inch. Hate to sound like an old man, but I just need it to function right at this point. And it'll still look good with 33s. So if you've got any suggestions on a decent all-terrain that's cheap, I mean cheap, go ahead and put that down there in the bleep bloops and I'll cruise through them. These mag wheels are awesome, absolutely keeping these. But I think I'm gonna need a winter set. He did throw in some steel wheels with like some Michelin ground Snowhawk King 42 ATSs. Something like that, pretty sure that's it. I might just run them for the winter because I don't wanna clobber up these nice mag wheels and then throw these on when the weather's halfway decent. The box is in really good shape. Look at this, no rot. You Chevy guys know what I'm talking about. Actually Fords too, around the wheel wells, across the bed supports. It's in really good shape. So I got pretty lucky there too. And I haven't checked yet. Yeah, I think that's just dirt. So it's not rotted under this lip either. Missing a support rod over here. That's no big deal, other than this goes non-stop down the road. That's, you know, keeps you awake. That's fine. We'll jump in this thing. Got some sagging door hinges, that's an easy fix. Gotta put a piece of PVC pipe or something over that. Get that fixed up. But right away you can see the floors have been patched. I mean, they're fairly scabbed in, but that's done. We don't got Flintstone model. She doesn't have any fancy options. Just got the crankalyzer, which is fine. It'll always work. No power. Locks. Got my cup holder. That's done. Cross it off the list. But I mean, it's in decent shape. It's going to town good. Was an AC truck. Radio, of course. She's been cut out. Dang it. I hate when they do that. I'm going to need something with the blue teeth. Maybe we'll do another Amazon radio. Right now I got the Tupac tube just blasting out the boom booms up there. Different seat. And I think the wheel probably came out of the same truck. That's for my little human. He's been helping out. I got ear piercers already carved into the side here. They're at an unreasonable height right into your eardrum. I'm not sure why they just didn't do the 6x9s. Pretty clean back there. You can see the original color. She was sprayed. It's definitely a base clear. I don't know when she was painted on, but 
Anyway, I'm thinking of doing carpet, not because it looks nice. You actually want steel or rubber for a work truck, but I need the insulation for the winter time. These gauges are shoddy. I got dummy lights, fuel gauge flops around. So I'm thinking of doing some digital gauges in here and that way I could get a tack out of her and then get my actual gauges here. And get rid of these shin busters. I just, I don't like those unless it's an emergency. Rest of it, I think we just let her eat. I don't know that I need to do anything else. If I'm missing something, put her down there. Maybe a seat cover. I don't know. She's already ruined. Dash pad. Just, I'm trying to keep the cost down a little bit. Them gauges are not going to be cheap. So the engine in this thing is what made it a really sweet buy. When I picked this up, when I picked this up, it only had... 600 some miles on it now it's got maybe 3,000 and it runs really good this is a 350 jags crate engine vortec head carbureted these are rated at 290 horsepower and this thing runs really good it's all of that it's got headers intake demon carburetor nice ignition system and I'm really surprised how it's pulling around these 35s to be honest it'll still it'll still spin them actually which is surprising got a nice optimal battery never be able to afford that in my life brand new radiator transmission cooler all the AC components are still here minus the pump later of course downside under the hood is the wiring is just an absolute nightmare and this was done before the last owner I got it from had the truck, but I mean, it's just, I'm not, there's like another harness kind of sort of spliced in. I've already had some issues with the main lead. I got to change this block up here. Truck keeps quitting because I'm losing 12 volt to everything. So I got to come in here and clean this up and change that out. A couple other small changes I got to make. I got no heat in the cab. I can run this thing hard and she'll only get to about 185. So I'm thinking that's a 195 thermo somewhere around there. I need to bring that down so I get the heater core going. And then this blower motor, she's weaker than a 12th round boxer. It's just, it's not doing much. That's an easy fix. Got to swap that out there. And then big plans in the future, if I could save up enough, is maybe go to like a Holly Sniper or something on this. So this winter, a guy can just, you know, jump in and turn the key and, eh, bling, bling, you know, and you don't have to just do the Michael Jackson on it to get it running. That would be nice. But that's pretty much it for under the hood. If I ever get to maybe put an AC on, I think a guy can get the bracketry and whatnot to make that happen. Maybe even change the belt style to the wider serpentine belt. So a few things up front here. If you look close at that tire, I got to change out that axle seal. And you can tell because of the way that it is. Also, this steering stabilizer is basically doing nothing. This thing's like driving an International 1086 and road gear down a gravel road. And if you've ever been there, you just, you don't do that again. So I need to fix that. And then also this hub elator, she's just, it's not... She's not doing anything. So I got about a month or so to get that fixed up. I think there's a set of Warren hubs already in the cab that came with it. That's neat. She's got brand new exhaust on her and those are gyps up there, but it doesn't have any tips. We can fix that though relatively easy. I am gonna paint those orange drums when we do a wheel swap. And then these brake lines, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. But I might just shorten them up a little bit so we get 100% over to the drums. Another big maybe if plan is get some discolator brakes on this thing, but I don't know if there's any cheap kits for the squares yet. You can see the blocks, they're just, they're in here angled, they're coming off the perch. It's just not looking very, very groovy. I need to do something with that as well. Red and white socks, maybe a Rancho kit? Not sure. You guys might know. It's got a new fuel tank up there. It's also running a digital fuel pump. Let me see if I can crawl under there quick. Yeah, here's the pump a later. Pre-filter. Comes down over into here. What the? 
not sure why there's just well they got the line but didn't want to cut and reflare the end so they just let the fitting slide i like that so if i ever did go to a sniper that would be really easy just to upgrade the pump right here pretty much there's that 350 transmission again it's questionable don't know much about it actually anything at all and i'll be corrected that's actually a 208 transfer case and i can tell that because of the way that it is i also got a rear seal on that going out dang it but the rest of the truck i mean as far as the frame goes underneath the box it's actually a solid rig i'll be dipped the old roof here had some cab lights on it that was leaking so that feller just threw on some rhino lighting and you know plugged them up that'll work just fine there is a lot of dents in the roof though um it would need a lot of work to make that straight and then there's also this big dent here so with all the random damage and dents and stuff on the truck i don't plan on doing anything body work wise i kind of prefer it this way actually i can actually use the truck and not worry about scratching it or banging it up but still looks decent enough to maybe ease down to dinner or something like that plus it would need quite a bit of work to be honest i mean just the cab and the doors this was really caved in you can see they popped that out it needs fenders another reason these 35s probably got to go she actually got this thing articulated or flexed out she's just gonna rip the fenders off I actually put 35s on a Chevy without no lift. We just saws alder, you know, all the way up into here, both front and rear. And then we dovetailed it, and my buddy Chad welded it until the gas tank exploded in my mom's garage. That's, that's a story for another day. I think I got a fix on this up front here. Quick and easy, fairly cheap. I don't know why it bothers me, but it does. If you look under the headlight here, remember that now and then look at this one over here they're definitely different i just got to find one or the other or just buy a new set that match that's pretty much it for a quick overview of the old girl here this is something that i would normally work on my own time which is also known as never or extremely late at night but if you'd like to see it on the channel let me know and then also let me know where you want me to start with this thing i'm kind of thinking tires and then front end rebuild before that thing goes dry on me. That would not be good. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.